what's up family welcome back to the channel so i'm about to do a quick vlog and let you know some of the things that i'm about to get started on in the next week or so and also we're going to talk about some things that are going on um in the public schools so let's get into the video before we do go ahead and hit that like button because we would love to have you here on tommy bikes homestead prepping <laughs> to my sunroom and I'm gonna show you what I'm about to work on my next project so here are the um, cabinets that my husband built to create a bigger island for us we took down the wall you can see all of that we're still working on it um, so yeah excuse all that junk over there okay so out here I haven't measured the space yet you guys so out here is my sunroom. Let me close the door. So I have not put any furniture out here yet. This is like, I was trying to figure out what I'm gonna do. So being it's winter time, it's cold outside. I don't have a greenhouse, but as you can see, I have all of this windows right here and windows up top along with ceiling fans so therefore i will have a way to mimic airflow and i don't even have to mimic airflow because these windows do open up so what i plan to do and look y'all look at the little sun design up there so what i'm going to do is this area over here is going to be like seating like I could put a, a TV out here all that other stuff but I'm not I don't think so this little area over here I'm gonna have like a couch a table um, some palms or something like that but at the windows I'm gonna have two shelves right here and then I'll probably have there'll be higher shelves like taller shelves and then I'll have the lighting to start my seedlings in <clears throat> excuse me i have outlets right here um i also will do some seedlings along this front side right here but i won't you know block my view or anything like that um these little things up here these can go up or down so I can let sun directly in if I want to or not. And then over here, I'm going to do two um, more shelves over here. And you see right here, I have it's air and heat control in here so I can keep this a nice temp. I have it down low. So the temp in here is, I'll probably get a thermometer, but the temp in here feels like it's probably around 68, maybe, no, maybe 72. It feels good in here. It's not cold in here at all. So this is going, this sunroom is going to be my, my greenhouse, you guys. So I really don't have to use the lighting um, because I have so many windows, but starting them off i will use some lighting for them so i will show you once i get this set up and let's go down into my prepper pantry so we can talk so hey fishy they're ready to eat like they will follow me because they're ready to eat so I'll feed them in a little bit. Okay, family, we are here in my little prepper palace pantry. Um, haven't done anything different with it, you guys, as you can see. So what I wanna talk about today is, first of all, I have things in front of me. What is this? 
Okay, so it's a different video I'm working on. So I'm working on a video. Um, Y'all know that I'm trying to up my game when it comes to having some form of backup power. You saw me do a video on that little black um, Akmo back there, the solar station. So I was gifted and I'm so forever grateful. And I'm going to do a separate video on this, but look what I got, y'all. Look what I got. So it weighs like 15 pounds. That's a weight in itself. Um, but it's lighter than the Akmo for sure. And a bag for it to come in. So yeah, I'm going to do a video on that because we need to have some backup power if the grid goes down. <clears throat> Even though this little boy here is not going to keep my big refrigerator on or anything like that, it will work like a small refrigerator and some other items. So um, what I want to talk about right now though is we are dealing, yes, I have my handy dandy notes. Um, public schools and the struggle that they are having to pretty much remain open because that is the big thing now you know they don't want to shut these schools back down because a lot of kids are missing in action when they do stuff like that um the work is not getting done uh they may not have internet access where they, where they live a lot of people live in rural areas and service, I can tell you personally, service is bad in a rural area. Um, so I was watching um, the local news, but it wasn't local for me pretty much. It's like an hour and a half away from me. But they were talking about Charlotte schools and um, different districts and stuff like that. And how the new struggle is with this pandemic and having um, this newest variant that's out here that's spreading like wildfire, causing, you know, a lot of illness, a lot of missing work from the teachers, from the uh, janitorial services, everything that makes a school function. Um, they are short staffed. They have, a lot of classrooms have like um, a lot of substitute teachers, uh, therefore some kids don't even show up or they go when they cut class because they are not really getting what they need from that, you know, substitute teacher. Um, they have the 10 days out and now CDC has the five days. If you are asymptomatic, you have no symptoms, you can wear a mask, go back to work. Do I think that's a good thing? Yes and no. Yeah, you need to have your staff there to provide the services that are needed, especially for the children. But on the second, on, on the other hand, rather, on the other hand, I also feel like, hey, you could be with this thing because I've had it. You could be feeling good and you're fine. And then the next thing you know, maybe you're sick again, you know what I'm saying? But now you've gone in and they're not trying to send whole classrooms home anymore like if one person shows symptoms or tests positive, they used to send the whole class home. Now, you know, they have kids in little pods within the classroom. So therefore, if you're in that particular pod, that pod will go home in quarantine, but the rest of the class will remain. So it's just like a big struggle. They're struggling with um, being able to provide transportation on a regular basis when it comes to the buses because like I said, all the way from janitorial staff being out because they're sick, teachers being out because they're sick, also the bus drivers are out because they're sick and they're having to actually get some uh, other officials to drive those routes to pick the kids up and they don't know how much longer they can sustain doing that because they have other things they have to do within their job description and driving a bus ain't it. But we need to have transportation to get the kids to school. So what are they to do? Let me know in the comments what you think about that. Um, I'm going to leave a short clip of 
what I'm talking about when it comes to the public schools. Has it been able to keep up with teachers' absences, only covering less than 50% of classes with substitutes who need one? The district has had to pull its central staff from their offices to cover classes. Thus far, we have been able to keep our schools open with only a couple of classes being transitioned to remote learning due to safety concerns for our students. Parents and students are noticing. There's uh, not enough staff or substitutes that there's a lot of kids sitting in classrooms without teachers, which is leading a lot of them to skip class and be roaming around, which is concerning to me. There's also a critical shortage of school nutrition staff and bus drivers. Our capacity to cover transportation routes is approaching the maximum. And so any upturn in driver absences will impact our ability to transport students to and from school. The school district is preparing for its toughest weeks yet in this pandemic. Even board members are preparing to sign up to cover shifts in classrooms. So moving on, next subject. The pandemic has caused a strain in a lot of areas and with a lot of people. All the way from container ships still being in a long wait to get unloaded. The ones that have gotten unloaded, you know, the containers off of the ships. Now, the containers are just sitting there waiting to be put onto a truck. And then empty containers just sitting there and in the way of other container ships coming in and bringing their goods in. So that, that whole process, that stuff is still going on, you guys. You don't hear about it every day on the news. So that's why I'm here to let you know that stuff is still happening, okay? And that is a trickle-down effect from the empty shelves that you're seeing, from stores fronting products, um, even putting pictures of products that should be there there to just to make the store look full now they're to the point where stores are pretty much not even able to hide the fact that they have these empty shelves they used to be able to hide it a little better than they're doing now that's why you're starting to see more and more um videos pop up on the actual news stations because they can't hide it from you anymore. They have been hiding it. The news has been hiding it. The stores have been hiding it because they don't want to create panic shopping, okay? If you just walking and pay, not paying attention, you think your store is full. And some people's stores are. This is a debate that I get in the comments all the time. Well, my area has what they need. But then I see people now are saying, well, I've always been the one to say my area is not dealing with this stuff. And then I walked into the store and boom, I was surprised there were no meats, there was no soda, there was no cereal, there was no anything for us to get because it is becoming harder and harder for stores to hide what is really going on. I tell you all the time, once it hits mainstream media, it's almost too late. It's not too late, but it's almost too late because now everybody is going to pay attention. Do Would I like for everyone to be prepped up, stopped up to the Raptors or whatever you want to say? Yes, I would. Is that going to happen? No, it's not. And it's almost a blessing that everyone is not going to do it because it gives the few that are really trying to get their um, items stocked up on their shelves at home a chance to get what they need. Because honestly, you guys, if everybody ran out to the stores right now with the state that the shelves are in, the stores are in, there would, be, there would not be enough food there would not be enough food for everyone. We are facing, we've always faced food insecurity here in the United States. It is more prevalent now with everything going on because with the container ships not being able to get the items in, you know, on the trucks and into these stores, that leaves the empty shelves. 
that creates higher prices. So even if the items are there, it's now becoming a point where the items are there, but most people with the amount of money that they make per hour or whatever cannot afford the things that they might have been able to afford a few years ago. So it's leaving a lot of people that you wouldn't normally think of in hardship. And when people get in hardship, they will do whatever they have to do to feed their family. Some will go about it the best they can, the right way, but there are some that are going to go about it however they can. Um, people already are impatient when they don't get their orders in from when they're sitting out there and they're waiting for their food to be brought out by the employees at Walmart, Kroger, any grocery store you want to name. Um, if those items aren't there or they don't have the workers there because the workers are out sick, there are people that are dying. I've had people let me know this. Hey, I work in Walmart. I see all the stuff that you're talking about. Thank you for talking about how we, you know, have a lot on our back and we're, we're dealing with it. A lot of people are going to work sick because they can't afford to stay home because the bills still keep coming in. Your bills don't stop because you're sick. So having patience is difficult for a lot of people. But when you throw a lack of food in the middle of that, then you're going to have angry people who do bad things. And y'all need to be careful when you're out and about. I even have to be careful when I'm out and about. I try to pay attention more and not do as many videos as far as um, recording when I'm going into the store because I need to pay attention to everything around me. Who's parked where? What vehicle is, you know, near me? Is that vehicle there? Is anybody following me in the store? All of these things we need to pay attention to because we're living in a different time right now. And a lot of people are struggling. And some people don't see a way out of that. If you are having a hard time right now and you cannot find, you don't have, not find, but you cannot afford the items that are in the store. You're living paycheck to paycheck and that paycheck is getting smaller and smaller because the amount of, the price of food right now, you might not be able to afford everything that you did before. You barely afforded it then. Some people, people have always from the be, beginning of whenever worried about, should I pay rent? Should I pay lights? Should I buy food? Should I pay a little bit here? Should I pay a little bit there? Then get some food. That money is becoming less and less. It's worth less and less because of inflation. So there are people who are struggling, who are dumpster diving to find what they need um, food-wise, you know. Wherever you can get a sale, get a sale. But if you are really, really, really struggling, please try to find a food bank. Try to find a church that is that has a food bank and they're giving food out. Do that. Um, don't be ashamed of that. There's no shame in feeding your family. Um, now, I've seen some people who can afford to buy what they need and will still go to the food bank. I don't like that. I feel like that's taking away from someone who is really destitute. Um, and and I, just, I just don't like that. So I hope that, and you see more and more things are behind the shelves that have the little alarm on it, like the medications and stuff like that. Even feminine products are sitting behind the shelves, deodorants, soaps, um, in some places, uh, feminine napkins, are sitting behind those little things. When you open it up, the alarm goes off because people are 
taking what they need because they cannot afford it. And of course, that raises the prices even more. But y'all, I don't want to get too deep into that. So moving on, leave me some comments down below what you think about that as well. Um, <clears throat> finally, push come to shove. Um, they, I think they will consider, this is my opinion. I think they will consider doing curfews again. Some people say, we never had no curfew. Well, we had a curfew in 2020. Some people didn't, depending on what state you were in. So we did. And it was, I think it was no one out after six or after eight or something like that. But I do believe like curfews or partial lockdown will be put into place if this new variant the O that's, you know, spreading like wildfire and any other thing that pops up will put us into a partial lockdown, if not a full one. You have other countries that are already doing partial lockdowns. You have places that are not allowing people to go in to get services or go to the grocery stores. Um, if they didn't go out when they told them to go out, so bad sorry for you you know you're not gonna get in if you don't have your um as some people say your vitamin your vitamin shot so um that's a lot to take into consideration when it comes to the people here in the united states who don't want to get any more vitamin shots who have already gotten the first two vitamin shots the third vitamin shot um there's another country there they they on their fourth one so and then there are there's a hmm, should i say that because y'all they are really monitoring these videos and i don't get a strike or anything so um but there is a bill that is waiting to be signed, approved, whatever, approved and signed. They want to mandate these uh, vitamin shots here in the United States. They really want to do that. Um, I'm all for if that's what you want to do, then you do it. I've had one and two. I don't want to get the third one. Um, it's going to be a point where everybody is going to have this thing that's going around, period. It's just, it's just, that's just the way it is. We're going to be living with this, seems like, for the rest of our life. So that's why they're loosening the quarantine times and all of that stuff from 10 to 5 days and this, that, and the third. So it's just a matter of time before they say, well, you know, Let's just say, what if, like in some places, they say to us here in the US, you will not be able to enter the grocery store. You will not be able to go to, if the movies are still open, which they are, the theater or anywhere without having all three, four, whatever the heck they wanna give us. What if they say that? Will you be ready? Will you be ready? What if they, like I was looking at Planet of the Apes. At the beginning of Planet of the Apes, they show this virus that went around. I can't remember what they called it in the movie. Um, that got everybody sick and a lot of people died. So they showed all of that. Why does that mimic everything that we're going through. When we watched that years ago, when that movie came out, we weren't in mass, we weren't doing, we didn't have any of this stuff going on. But it's like deja vu. Watch that movie again. If you don't watch the whole movie, just watch the beginning part of the movie, the second one. And yeah, it, it's just, it's crazy. Even the first one, it's just crazy how movies mimic real life situations. And you can learn a lot from that. 
and see how people react when things happen and the panic and the killing and, and all of that other stuff that goes on. Y'all, it's a mess. It is a mess. So I don't want to make this an extremely long video. I know it's going to be a long video. And I'm not even going to apologize for that because I feel like I like talking to you guys. And it's been a while since I've done it here in the Prepper Palace. And yeah. So I will see y'all in the next video because I really need to go to a few stores. I need to price um, my shelves for my... Um, seedlings that i'm about to start in february i decided not to do it this month well one i've been sick so um i still have that little cough every now and then and yeah it is what it is and it ain't what it ain't and i will be doing another store walkthrough i just won't be doing so many of them back to back to back to back so i hope that you enjoy those but I do have my homesteading stuff that I have to, um, not have to, but want to record some of that stuff so you guys can see what I am doing. Because next month we have to go to the main homestead about 20 minutes from us, maybe. And we have to get some fencing put up. I have to purchase all of my wood for my husband to... Um, cause I don't want to do the raised beds. I did my raised beds last year, but I'm gonna let him do it and just make my stuff really beautiful <laughs> and get these raised beds put up so that I'll have somewhere to put my ceilings when it's time to transplant them. And I'll show you all of that hardening off the plants and all of that stuff. I'm not going to do a lot of showing you how to can stuff because I'm still learning myself and I don't want to be the one that teaches you something everybody does things different and i'm not in the mood to, for oh you shouldn't do this you shouldn't do that so i do have some canon videos that's up you're welcome to check them out they're in a whole playlist whatever you want to see it is there and yeah y'all i thank y'all for supporting the channel i appreciate you if you are new thank you for being here if you are returning thank you for coming back and showing so much love and support i wish I had wrote it down but I wanted to do some shout outs but shout out to each and every one of y'all for all the love and support that you show even the ones that you know don't care for the channel but they watch the channel and they leave their opinions I appreciate it if you do it in a nice kind way um I appreciate y'all helping each other in the comments I only ask that you not advertise channels in my comments because I I want to be the one to shout out a channel. I don't want that in my comments. And I have had to delete some of those things. Not that I don't like that channel. I may not know what that channel, I may not have seen that channel. So therefore I don't know what they do on that channel. And I don't want to say, oh, I condone this channel because it might be something that I particularly don't agree with even though you do. So it's not out of disrespect, it's just out of respect for what I want to put on my channel. So I appreciate you guys. Continue to help each other in the comments. Continue, you know, it's okay to say, well, you know, there are other videos out there by so-and-so, so-and-so, but I also have some of those videos too. You know what I'm saying? So it kind of hurt my feelings and say, oh, you should check out so-and-so because they have videos on this. Well, I do as well. So I have older videos that people just have not seen because I just, you know, started getting out to one more people. But I thank you guys for helping each other. And I thank you for helping me because I learned a lot from seeing your comments in there. There are some things that I have implemented and some things I have not, but it made me think. You know, could I do this here? So y'all take care. Have a blessed day. If you sow a seed today, you will grow something tomorrow. And if you prep today, you'll be prepared for tomorrow. I love you, but God truly loves you more. He created only when you be the best you you can be. And when you are, you can go out and spread God's love with distance if you have to. And if you know the person, say, hey, do you need a hug today? Because maybe they do. And nothing wrong with that, right? So
So y'all take care. Have a very, very, very blessed day. And I'll see you in the next video.